Welcome to Agenda Edina, a news program summarizing the actions taken at City Hall that affect you most. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty. Should Edinburgh remain an indoor park or become more of a children's activity center? That's the question the Edina City Council has begun to wrestle with as it looks to make the park more solvent. Last year, the city hired ATS&R, planners, architects, and engineers, with consultant Ballard King, a consulting firm specializing in recreation and wellness center feasibility studies, to study opportunities to increase revenues to meet operational expenses at Edinburgh Park. They're hoping to expand on the opportunities that we're currently offering for families. Edinburgh is very much a multi-generational destination, and uh, they are definitely trying to capitalize on that as well. Among the consultants' recommendations are to close the swimming pool, track and fitness area, and repurpose those spaces with additional children's activities, birthday party locations, and office space. New children's activities would include a soft play area and challenge or ropes course. In addition, the consultants recommended up to two-thirds of the park's plants be removed and the grotto filled in so that interactive technology play areas could be constructed there. We looked at many, many options, none of which were in the, in the report except for the final recommendations, which really aligned with all the criteria. Opportunity to create revenue, opportunity to have active multi-generational venues, um, to keep the feel of the park, to keep the trees and those sorts of things. So that's what the recommendations were all about. The Council and Park Board will meet later this winter to further discuss the proposal and other options. Snow might still cover Edina's roadways, but plans are well underway for several street reconstruction projects scheduled to start this spring. Earlier this month, the City Council approved street reconstruction projects in the Vikings Hills and Valley Estates neighborhoods. Well, I certainly believe that uh, both of these projects are, are warranted for the community. Um, like I said, our goal here is to maintain a sound infrastructure and a, good, and a high quality of life for the residents, and we believe that the roads you drive on and the utilities that you use on a daily basis are critical to that good quality of life. Later this winter, the council will consider other street projects proposed for 2012. If approved, all projects will begin this spring with substantial or complete construction by fall. A recent addition to City Hall is helping the city of Edina conserve energy and save money. Edina 16 Scott Denfeld has the story. This winter, sunshine is more valuable than ever here in Edina. That's because the city is heating up its newly installed solar panels. We're out here, uh, we're doing a rooftop solar installation for them. And Edina is more of an ideal place to benefit from solar energy than you might think. For Minnesota, uh, we have about the same output as far as a solar system like this is what they would in San Francisco. So. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't associate the sun in Minnesota, but it balances out with the long days in the summer and the short days in the winter. So why did the city of Edina end up making the move to solar energy? We uh, applied for a ARA, American Recovery Grant, and uh, we were successful. So the grant was for some kind of renewable energy. Um, we chose solar. Uh, because wind was not as good of an option. Once you factor in the grant and other incentives through Excel in the state of Minnesota, the cost of the city is zero dollars. The city will see a return of about $1,300 per year. And it just kind of helps with the overall building efficiencies and reduction of operational costs. And in addition to the lowered energy costs for the city, Commissioner Iyer sees other benefits from the project. A project like this would show the commitment of the community, the Edina community, uh, towards renewable energy as part of an overall you know, strategy of energy security. So as the sun shines on Edina, it will serve as a reminder of the project that Iyer sees as an example for others to follow. I think in the state of Minnesota, Edina is definitely in the forefront. I'm very pleased that it came full circle to fruition and we were actually able to implement the project. But it's a testament to the volunteerism, I guess, in the city of Edina that we could put this together, make it happen. For Edina 16, I'm Scott Denfeld. The solar panels used in the project were produced here in Minnesota. Join us next month when we give you a glimpse of this year's Winter Ice Festival at Centennial Lakes Park. Thanks for watching this episode of Agenda Edina. I'm your host, Dorothea Marty.